economic systems. Today, we are going to take you on a journey concerning how the systems change over time and how the economic systems and the questions that people and decision makers usually ask for themselves. The three main questions is what to produce, for whom to produce, and how to produce. So in our journey today, we are going to look for the four different economic systems that are existing. So let's start by the classical and the traditional economic system, which is based on small communities, families. They are having certain customs and traditions. They are living on hunting or let's say on fishing, or they are depending on their the available resources that they have in certain economy. So they rely in their trading together on partner product in terms of product. So they basically produce little products and they are having a small waste. This economic system is based on custom and tradition handed down from one generation. This is family habits. Allocation of the resources are depending on their habits, ritual or customs they used to have. So part of they are system which they can trade together, no money, product with a product. But the problem of barter is that it is not usual change of one commodity with the same value of the same commodity. So we have a different places that depend on trading as a partner in African parts of India and Australia and certain families there. So the traditional economic systems there, what will be produce here, they produce based on their values and their rituals dictation. How it will be produced by their values as well and their religious aspects. For whom they will produce it for traditions and the values. So the customs and tradition that they live upon is the main directors for answering these questions. But does this system last? No, this system does not last. Why? Because it have discourages new ideas. They the lack of progress and they are static. They are having lower standard of living or GDP. As well, it is having a lot of advantages, but it's fake. The economic role are set based on predictable conditions. They are not taking anything under uncertainty. So later than they are the capitalism. This system relies on the consumption of the choices made by the consumers. Consumer dictate here what they produce and for whom and how and everything. And this is started in USA since they explore and find the United States in the early stages. And the system there was depending on households and firms. So the business are the main source of production and they depending on what they own of factors of production. Government have no role at all, run on self-interest and competition, and they are based on market rules. And through history, this economic system does not last because the weather crisis exists in the United States and the supply decreases and then the prices increases and this system ignore the needs of the poor people. And we will find later it collapsed because it does not sustain and does not fulfill the needs of the people. So what would be produced? They will produce the thing that the consumer wanted and they will be willing to pay it. The entrepreneur there respond to the demands and the needs of the people and the ones. And for whom? They, for the one who have money for it, who afford. But if I don't have money, then you cannot afford, then you cannot have this product. So the system goes and runs between the businesses and the firms and no intervention for government here. But this system fails because it does not take in consideration the social class and the need of the poor people. It has advantage for sure. So it is freedom, it is no government, interference, incredible variety of choices, and the consumer satisfaction are happy. But it ignores a lot of things. The productive people only will take pay. Workers and business face uncertainty as well. No enough public goods such as education, health, and defense. So these systems or these products or these services are not available. Then we have high unemployment because the one who owns factors of production and have a business who works and the one who does not, does not have anything. And this leads to a failure in the market. So the resources later, it was not satisfactory and poor people increases. So they asked to move the business and replace it with the government. And then we face ourselves with a new system, which is called the command economy, a central authority. Government is controlling everything. Government is deciding all the people needs and wants. 
and we still have North Korea, Cuba, and previously Nazi Germany, they are adopted the centralized decision maker. So it have a certain characteristics such as the government control everything, it have the power production, but it have a very slow changes in the economic situation. Everything is centralized in the natural part. Entrepreneurship is there, is suppressed, and contributing to fewer choice. So the question is here, what is being produced? So here the government decide. How is being produced? The government as well, we're going to answer the same question. For whom? whomever the government decided its needs. So it have a good advantages because it overcome the failures of the capitalism. And it care about education, health and services, all the variety of these things. Very little unemployment because the government hire all the people. But it does not mean the wants of the people, no incentives, require huge steps and regulation, bureaucracy. New and different ideas are discouraged, no room for individuality. So this system, the capitalism, nor the command sustains. So we have a mixed economy system, a mix of all other three economic systems. Some government involvement, consumer driven aspects of the economy. So there are no pure market for system or pure command economy because command economies are impossible to regulate all the markets need. As well, the free markets cannot provide all the public goods. So here, this is a failure and this is a failure. So we need a blend of both of them. What are the blend? As we explained it before in the circular flow, you will have the firms, the business, the household, and the government. They are all interacting to accelerate the production of GDP and increase the economic loss. So if we see here, either the totally planned on the left or the totally free in the economy on the left, it is not accepted. In the mid-1980, the command system, they are centralized on the left, such as in China and Cuba and North Korea. The right hand side, they are have huge naturally free economic system. But by the early 2020, we find people maintain their same situation. On other, we have a different situation where they are biased to the totally free or they are mixed. So the economic systems here, as you see, are the pure planned economy on the left hand side, which is the communist, or on the right hand side, which is a pure free market, it is the capitalist. And it, there is a mix between the socialist leaning and capitalist leaning. So economic systems inform this matrix, it depends on the allocation. If you look here, if it is planned, a social ownership, so this is the socialist planned economy. If we move a little bit and approach the market system and we look for the social ownership, so this is what we call it market socialism. If we go for this quadrant and we look for the social ownership and we take planned, this is the planned economy. If you go to the right, private ownership and planning, so we have a command, the capitalism, government is controlling the majority of everything, and this is the system where the private ownership, it is under supervision of the government. But if I have a private and a market system completely free, this is what we call it market capitalism. By this, we finish the three economic systems, the basic, and we introduce the traditional economic systems, which you understood the three questions and the main economic system that pass through the history of economic history. Thank you for watching.